Hi, this is Andy Ainsworth again from uh, Seattle Christian Counseling, um, located out in Silverdale. And uh, I'm very honored to continue serving as a counselor out there and uh, um, have a great opportunity to uh, be with wonderful people and, uh, and, of course, we hope demonstrate God's compassion and, and, and lives and, and care well. Um, this is the third, uh, third video um, discussing uh, fearful tendencies in our, in our relationships um, or faithful tendencies and faithful lifestyles that where, where we can address one another's relationship needs and bring compassion and care in, um, uh, uh, husbands to wives and wives to husbands and uh, really calm hearts through a faithful giving and actually receiving as well. Uh, unfortunately, because people are oftentimes so alone, as we discussed earlier, actually in a couple of videos, we believe, I believe that aloneness is a very serious problem in our culture. Um, um, and I don't think it's the, the issue is going away anyway, any, anytime soon. Um, we believe fear is a big part of that. Uh, so tonight, um, just, just addressing um, what, what does uh, this third area of, of fear, um, how does it manifest in our marriages? And uh, we're seeing, in, and again, as I mentioned in our, uh, our second video, um, we believe selfish taking is, is kind of a, a go-to and an automatic response when we're afraid that needs aren't going to be met. But the selfish taking I'm talking about in this particular video is where I'm going to stop giving because you're not giving to me. I'm going to stop giving to Paulette because I feel like she's not giving to me the way I deserve. Um, um, as has been shared in other writings and, and videos, this is nothing new, but we have quid pro quo relationships in, uh, at work, in, in ministry, in marriages, in families. And it's a, a real sad, a sad situation when marriages ha uh, count on a quid pro quo value system in order to get needs met. It simply doesn't work. Um, it, does re it does really speak to self more selfish taking. So we believe that the fearful tendency, when people stop giving because they're not receiving, um, uh, we simply start taking what we, uh, what we think we deserve. And uh, it, it adds a lot of pain to the relationship. But what does God say about this? What, what if you are giving truly from your heart? You've prayed, um, you wanna be generous with your spouse, um, you're not expecting anything in return, and uh, uh, things happen, um, things happen in life. Sometimes spouses are sick and unable to give back. Um, they're in the hospital, maybe they're walking through a cancer process and they, um, this thing is a little bit Im imbalanced and you have to care for the kids more often. You've got to work your full-time job and care for your spouse like at the same time and take care of a lot of home business and, and uh, uh, the church may be helping you, or you may be very alone. What happens when you're not, when there's that unintentional um, uh, absence of, of care coming to you by the person that is in your life, that, that spouse, that husband, that wife? What if you're giving, truly are giving with a sincere heart, a compassionate heart, and, and God has really put on your heart to give to your, give to your husband, to give to your wife, and nothing's coming back and you find yourself being frustrated by that. What's really going on there? Um, certainly we, we all love to be cared for and, and love to receive, um, generally love to receive, but what happens if it's just not coming back the way you think it ought to? It just doesn't seem right and you're kind of growing tired of giving and, and nothing's coming back. What does God say to that? What does God say? Well, he's pretty pretty specific. For starters, um, we know um, those who live by faith in Jesus Christ, he came down to this earth to give his life because he loves us and, and has compassion for us and that will never stop. Um, and we continue to neglect and ignore and walk away from, accuse, be angry at and frustrated with him. And yet he continues to compassion, give compassion to us. He'll never stop giving us his compassion. That's his very nature, the nature. That's his essence. 
but that's kind of hard. We say, well, I'm not Jesus, so it's kind of hard to do. Well, he gives us his word. He would not put lessons in his word about giving um, if he didn't uh, think we could do it. But his word gently reminds us that we need to practice what his word says. And tougher to, tougher to do than, say, sitting here over a video. But he certainly wants us to experience scripture firsthand. For example, he puts it in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he talks a lot about love. And many of us call that the love chapter. And there's a genuine giving, period, without expecting anything in return. There's another idea in Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, that God calls us, in Paul writing, he says, um, I want you to be more concerned about the other person's interest than you are your own. In other words, forget about yourself, which is not a real popular thing to say in our, in our culture, in our world, actually. Um, but to, for me to, to forget about myself, that I decrease, as John says, and that Paulette increases in my life. And, and that I, that I um, give myself to her, um, even though maybe something's not coming back that I, I think I really need. Um, no, he says to give. There's a man named Zacchaeus in the Bible that he was a thief and a traitor. And he was, he was taking from people. He was, he, was, he, was, uh, he was a thief. He was a crook. I think he was an organized crime guy. And Jesus came to him and called him by name and invited himself to his house, even though um, uh, Zacchaeus hadn't done a thing and in terms of deserving um, Jesus' uh, care and wanting to respect him and accept him and give him the attention that he needed. Zacchaeus was simply a man who was in deep trouble, and Jesus wasn't expecting. Read, read, the, read Luke chapter 19. Jesus was expecting nothing in return. And yet, um, it shows in Scripture that, that Zacchaeus was so grateful. We don't know what was said in Zacchaeus' house, but he was so grateful and gave so much back um, because of the love he received. So it'll inevitably, something very special will happen when we give the way God calls us to forgive. So what, what would faith look like um, in, in this situation? How, how, how do we act upon faith? Um, situations, scenarios, where there seems to be some conflict here that, that, uh, that you might be giving and, and you know, the Zacchaeus principle isn't coming back around. You're not really receiving the care or the generosity back. Well, maybe there's some needs that are, again, we always, as, if you've been with us for a while in our videos or in articles, we, uh, we invariably talk about relationship needs. Maybe some needs are not being met. What about this? What if there's a poor behavior in your spouse and it looks like uh, losing it with the kids? What would you say the relationship needs are? Um, are you going to withhold uh, from, from your mate, from your spouse, from your journey mate, this partner of yours, your life partner, because um, you know he's, he's lost it one too many times, she's lost it one too many times, so I'm not going to give anything until she gets her act together, until he gets his act together. Again, let's remember the Zacchaeus principle, that Jesus came to him not because he had his act together. Well, what, what, if, what if we said that there were some unmet needs going on there? That, that parent that's losing it with the kids, what if, there's, what if that parent just isn't getting the attention, in other words, doesn't feel listened to, that that maybe your spouse it doesn't believe that you're entering her world. Maybe your spouse doesn't believe you're entering his world. Maybe, maybe your spouse feels very alone and unsupported and, and needs you to, to uh, come alongside and maybe pick up the child, maybe change a diaper, maybe uh, take the kids for a walk with the dog. Um, maybe your spouse is really asking inappropriately in a finding man, kind of hurling, if we go back to our last video, kind of hurling at the kids um, because hurling at you doesn't work. You just disappear. So that's just a thought. Don't mean to offend you, but I'd ask you to take a look in the mirror. What about what about uh, one of your spot? One of you is complaining about spending, um, and uh, there's a real concern, and there's a stress, and there's some hurling, 
about spending or sarcasm about spending, uh, uh, making, making jokes and using sarcasm, um, that's not funny. It's a, it's a way of expressing frustration in, in an unhealthy way, and, and frustration is a form of anger. So what if there's a complaining at frustration being expressed? Um, may, maybe, maybe the mate who's doing the, doing the expression feels unappreciated. She might be working all day. Um, maybe, sir, maybe you haven't been able to find that job that you need. And you're really looking hard and you're really trying hard and helping out with the kids. And yet your spouse is coming home and your wife is coming home after a 10 hour day and, and plus commute and kind of feels unappreciated for working so hard to somehow keep things afloat. So guys, I'm not picking on you. I'm just saying those scenarios happen. How about this? Um, one of you, um, one of you is telling the other what to do. Going back to that manipulating, nagging stuff in our first video, um, maybe maybe I'm telling Paulette what to do rather than asking her and, and asking her questions and entering her world. And uh, I just find myself kind of telling her, lecturing her, advising her about what to do about scenarios in her life and about for our family, for our relationship. Well, how about maybe I'm not feeling respected? Maybe I'm really kind of uh, uh, manipulating with my language to so, so I'll feel respected by Paulette. So I'll receive approval from her. In other words, she trusts my character as, as, as a man. And, and so again, what kind of needs are being expressed through unhealthy behavior? And do if we're really if we're really paying attention and, and doing it God's way, if you just so desire, if you choose to, um, the Zacchaeus principle is very important. Um, I know Paulette has come to me for many years, and, and coming up September, we've been together for 44 years. And one of the things that she's done really well, and I'm so grateful for, and I don't say it enough, is that when I'm I'm kind of being a jerk, when I'm not very nice, and I'm making demands. Um, that she continues to um, be Jesus in skin and uh, approach me and expecting nothing in return. And it really has softened my heart um, and uh, helped me to learn a few things about, about receiving, humbly receiving, and then eventually giving back out of a grateful heart. So, so um, there's, this is a conclusion of a few videos on fear and where it goes. Um, uh, the first one, we're talking about manipulating and nagging, nagging and demanding and controlling and, and all kinds of tactics uh, because of uh, you're afraid that you're you're not going to be cared for. Um, and what does faith has to do have to do with that? God has a lot to say about caring for one another, so we don't have to do that anymore. Again, back to relationship needs, um, uh, hurling. Um, and hurling, two hurlers in a, in a marriage can get pretty ugly. Hurlers and hiders, ugly. Hiders and hiders, we believe, are the hug ugliest. All of those are tactics in demanding ways to selfishly take to somehow have your needs be met because we're afraid they won't be. And then tonight, sharing um, this last piece and uh, taking a look at, at maybe um, how, how we take and, and, be, and, and, and don't even know that we're living a quid pro quo kind of principle out in our marriage. And, and is God actually calling us to give, expecting nothing into return, in return? Or do you find yourself, uh, uh, you're going to stop giving and you'll start giving when your, your mate starts giving? Is that your tendency? What would God speak to you? What does his word speak to you? What do good friends that you might be sharing with speak to you? I hope you have some honest ones that can challenge you in that area. So I hope these three videos on, on your fearful tendencies and, and faith versus faith uh, uh, has had an impact on you and maybe moving your heart a little bit. Um, maybe need a little help on sorting that stuff out. I hope you'll call your pastor or as I usually say, call a pastor, a mature friend who will tell you the truth or share the truth um, or a counselor. Um, we encourage you not to go it alone, not to isolate yourself because and, and try to figure it out yourself because that self-reliant stuff as we've shared in our articles that will just simply um, cause you to, to stay in your cycle. So God bless and uh, hope we see you down the road. Bye-bye.